Meanwhile, Thomas Jefferson and the Tripoli Pirates came out on paperback, and what we did is uh, added a look at one of the two superstars that you might not know, superheroes uh, in America's military past. His name is Stephen Decatur. Steve knows because he was in Washington. Uh, he was going to be president until he was taken out in a duel. He was in four wars and just impressed the, everybody he met. He was the man. So we thought we'd take a look, a walk through what is a now museum, uh, the Decatur House in Washington. Watch. I want to give you an idea of who Stephen Decatur was by showing you where he lived. Now picture this. Over there is Lafayette Square Park. Down there is the White House. And this building over here, this is Stephen Decatur's house. He used his war earnings to buy this house. And the reason why I point out these structures in St. John's Church over there is because that's all there was in Washington then. The goal for Washington's high society was to get inside these doors because this is where the action was. Welcome to Stephen Decatur's house. In 1820, he was shot in a duel, and this is ultimately where he would lose his life on the same day. But inside is where he lived. So this would be Stephen Decatur's sitting room. Notice the floors, original floors that Decatur had put in. And he had a lot of visitors. After all, you're talking about a man that at 25 was the youngest captain ever in the Navy, who fought in four wars and was so successful in the two Barbary Wars, he was known as the conqueror of the Barbary Pirates. Some of the memorabilia that's still here today, a wine corps given to him by the city of Philadelphia for his exploits in the War of 1812. Here you have a sword because he was such a great fighter. And of course you have his day book. He hand copied every letter that he would send to presidents, secretaries of navies, secretary of state, or secretary of war. So he would have an official record of everything he did. This was a special guy. Look at this place. It's beautiful even by today's standards. Original colors as well. And expensive colors. You got the light blue, the only thing more expensive, the yellow right at the bottom. Inside here, kind of the heart of the second floor. These are the parlor rooms. High ceilings are certainly attractive and even have the original shutters. Bit of a federal style. What did Decatur look like? Check it out. A portrait done around the year 1815. He passed away at the age of 41 in 1820. Stephen Decatur lived his entire adult life as a true American patriot, our first great terror fighter, and our first great American war hero in our second generation of Americans. It's great to know that even though it's been almost 200 years since his death, his life and his legacy is not forgotten. There you All go. Right, uh, great job, uh, Brian Tully, putting that together. By the way, Friday I'll be in Georgia at the Barnes & Noble there in Marietta on November 11th in Sanford, right outside Orlando, and at the Villages, because you cannot have a book tour. <laughs> right, and I'm going over to Dayton, Ohio on the 18th. Yeah, I'm looking to do a blood test on you, Angel. Are you on December 9th, Jacksonville. <laughs> Jacksonville. <laughs> I'm just to see what you're on. <laughs> I, love, I love that story. I think that's awesome, because it's giving us a piece of history. Can we tour that house if we go to Washington? You can. Just knock. There's people know. inside. <laughs> Not anymore. Is Thank Brian you. suggesting we should all have blood tests before we have debates now? Ah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, let's that, move ahead. That was interesting. Good job. Thanks for Thanks. going down to Washington. Uh, it was fun. Eye opening. Congratulations right. on the book, Brian.